folks, Errol over here at Fine Myth, where today I'm doing another canning video. And if you can't guess what we're canning today is peaches. Now if you hear rumbling in the background, it is thundering out there. I was splitting firewood earlier and decided to come in and do this because it started to rain. So what I am doing here is packing my peaches into the jar. I've already washed a whole bowl of peaches. If you've never had a fresh peach, I assume most people probably have at some point in their lives, you know they've got kind of a fuzzy, uh, velcro-y kind of feel to their skin. That all washes off when you wash them. Plus, like most things, if you didn't grow it yourself, and I live about five hours from somewhere where I could, uh, where peaches can grow, um, you uh, don't know what's all on the outside, so you definitely want to wash it. So I've washed them, then I've sliced them. If you care to peel your peaches, which some people do, which I think is a little funny because a lot of the nutrients, the vitamins C and A and all of that stuff is, and a lot of the flavor is in the peels. My parents used to joke with people that they can't whole wheat peaches because they left the peels on, uh, but I really just prefer them that way. If you care to peel them instead, you can certainly do that. You can either peel them by hand or raw or um, just Google how to, how to rapidly peel peaches and there's a way to dunk them in boiling water and then ice water that helps take the peel off. That is obviously not what I have done here. Besides, it makes them so, so much more of a prettier color because the uh, a lot of the color is in the peel. Now what kind of peaches can you can? You can can any kind. These are these are called a free stone. Let me show you what that means. When you go to cut a whole peach in half like this it's gonna for one pull apart somewhat easily and the stone or the pit is going to pull out somewhat easily. Cling stone do not do that. They are very hard to get apart and you need a knife or something to scoop the, uh, the pit out because it's attached very firmly. Cling stone are actually my preference for canning because they're a firmer peach. They're not particularly delicious to eat raw, but they, uh, they can very well because they keep their texture. These are gonna get a little bit mushier, but they were the peaches I could access, so they're what I'm doing this year. But if you have options and you have like a local orchard, uh, whoever's at the orchard should know, ask for what varieties they have that are cling stone and they will be a little harder to get apart than what I just showed you. Next, I wanna pack these in here fairly snugly because they're going to, as, as we can them, they're going to heat up and cook a little bit, which is going to make them shrink a tiny bit. And I don't wanna end up with a jar that's, you know, just peaches to here and liquid the rest of the way. So as I pack them, I can, uh, you know, give the jar a shake and kind of just snug them down in there a bit. Again, these are going to be a little bit mushier because of the variety and the fact that they're not a cling stone peach. So, just packing them all in here. I'm going to need a few more. My bowl was full, so I had to quit slicing. There we go. My canner can hold, um, seven quarts at once. So that's what I'm going for filling up here. Um, jars, you do, do need to use a canning jar, um, something designed for canning, ball, mason, etc. There's brand names that have been around forever. And you do need to make sure these were freshly washed. Um, you want a, some people even prefer to boil them, but you want a, definitely a clean, if not sterilized, um, jar for doing this kind of thing. And on the ripeness, if I'm going to eat a peach fresh, I want it to get to the point where it's like so juicy that when I take a bite in, you know, the juice kind of rolls down your chin kind of thing. You do not want them quite that ripe for canning. Again, because they will just get really mushy and you'll have like peach sauce, which there's nothing wrong with that. It, it tastes good as well. It's just not quite, uh, it's not going to give you the texture of a nice sliced peach that you might be looking for if you go that route. These are a hair overripe. I need to get these done today before they got any softer and they're already a little bit beyond what I would prefer. Um, you can can them in any size of chunks. I find slices to be a pretty good compromise. You could do dices. You'll get a few more in a jar. You can do full halves. You'll get less in a jar. Um, 
whatever whatever your preference is but it is best to keep everything in one jar the same so if you put halves in don't top it off with some dices because they'll they'll uh, cook very differently than the halves will and it'll just give you a really uneven texture so whatever size or shape you want to go with just do all of them that uh, same way, it, at least in a single jar. I could certainly do jars of slices and jars of halves and jars of, of dices. That would not be a problem. So this probably give me enough to finish filling that. I'm going to be doing a few camera loads, though I'm not going to record every batch because they're all going to be the same. So you're getting in on the, the first batch I'm running through here. The rest of my jars packed. There's one in there I missed slicing. Now, as we, the next thing we're going to do, and some people prefer to hot pack um, their peaches, which would mean instead of just packing them into jars like this cold, and again, like I've talked about with other canning things, you don't want to fill it above that ring. Uh, because it needs that room to be able to seal. Um, you could actually boil these peaches in the, the juice before packing them into jars. Um, some people prefer that method. You can look up what the USDA recommends as being most safe if you are curious about that. But I am showing you, I am not the USDA, I am not a medical doctor, but I am somebody who's been canning lots of produce for a long time, and I'm just showing you what I do. Now what I've got here is a gallon of water that's almost ready to boil, and I'm going to make a little syrup. There are several ways to do this. You could just put hot water over the peaches. That would be fine, except that because of the way water is very good at dissolving things, what would happen is the uh, the water would leach a lot of peach flavor out of your peach slices, and you'd have tasty peach juice, but the actual peaches themselves would get pretty bland because you've leached out a lot of their flavor. So I prefer that to not happen. So what I'm going to do is make a little bit of a syrup. Now if you buy peaches in a grocery store, you often see um, them sold, uh, if you look at the ingredients, as um, being in heavy syrup or light syrup, um, very often with high fructose corn syrup and so on. That's not what we want to do. I'm using honey here. This jar is a little firm. Not as firm as some of my jars get. Um, but I'm doing... Honey is sweeter uh, in the same volume than sugar. So if you were going to use sugar for this, I would probably do close to two cups to make a light syrup. I'm not trying to make the peaches any sweeter. I'm going to just do about one cup uh, because honey is sweet. I, but I'm not wanting to make the peaches more sugary tasting. I just want there to be enough sugar content from the honey in my syrup that I don't leach all the flavor out of the peaches. I want the, the syrup flavor to, for the most part, there's always some mixing, but I want the syrup flavor to stay in the liquid and I want the peach flavor to stay in the peaches. So that's kind of what we're trying to do here, make an equilibrium so that we don't drain all the flavor out of the peach itself. Now that is just about to boil, and while that fish is getting hot, so the proportions there are somewhere between one to two cups of sugar or honey to a gallon of water. Um, you can make it a little sweeter, you can make it less sweet. Honey is more sugary tasting for the same amount of volume than sugar, so you can work with uh, what you prefer there. And here, this is my steam bath canner. I am going to get that heating as well because in just a moment you can you can certainly do this in a water bath canner I prefer steam bath some people do not like steam bath um, that's kind of a matter of personal preference uh, yellow peaches do not need to be pressure canned though you could if you wanted to it's not necessary I have heard that yellow flesh peaches uh, are less safe to can because they have less acid in them. I have never tried to can them. I think they're not as flavorful anyway, but just something to be aware of if you were going to use a white fleshed peach instead. So we're going to get all this hot and then show you the next step. Okay, just a few more minutes. Now I've got a rolling boil on this. So 
that is what we want. I've got steam coming out of my canner there. Um, I want to fill these up. Got my handy little funnel here. This fits wide or narrow mouth um, jars. Perfect for not making a gigantic mess while you are doing this. And now I just, at this point, I want to keep everything as hot as I can. So that's even why I scooted the jars over here. They were hot from me washing them, but they can get a little hotter just even from the radiant heat. Oh, can't pour it that fast, you'll make a mess on your countertop. Go pour it in there a little slow so it has time to uh, bubble around the peaches. There we go. Um, but everything I can do to keep everything nice and really hot here. You know, the radiant heat off the side of the stove can keep them a little warmer. That's all great. I'm having a tendency to pour too fast there. And with the liquid, you don't want your liquid to come up above that ring either. This one I've got just a little full. I'm going to have to scoop it down just a hair there. I want to make sure there's no bubbles in it. Which I'll show you how to do in one second. That whistling was the canner that's hot enough, and I'm not quite ready to put them in, so I'm going to turn it off for a second. Now again, you could do the same thing with peeled peaches. You could do the same thing. You could use fruit juice um, if you want to. If you don't want to do like the honey syrup or sugar syrup, but you don't want to just leach all the flavor out of your peaches. I've never tried that. I don't know what flavor it would give it if you use a mild flavored fruit juice like a grape juice or something. Um, but I think some people do that as well, just if you want another option. But again, the main point of that is we're trying to end up with our peach flavor staying in the peaches and not just leaching it all out and making peach juice with uh, flavorless peaches. Don't do what I did and pour too fast. The flat peach slices take a minute for the water to liquid to get around. And if you pour too fast, then you make a mess on your countertop that you have to clean up. And again, just in the interest of keeping everything nice and warm here, you know, my jars are up against each other. They're close to my stove. Um, you don't ever want to take a real cold jar and put boiling water in it because you can shatter it even with a jar designed for canning. Um, there we go. Okay. Well, I got a couple of those too full. Well, not quite full enough. Again, I want to just be at the uh, at that top level of the the ring. So I'm leaving this neck part of the jar open. That's pretty good. Okay, doke. Now you've seen me do this before. If you've watched any of my other canning videos, this was boiling hot water that I put in here, and now it's just hot water. <laughs> um, but before I put those lids on, I want to take just the hot water. And the jars were clean, but I could have easily got, and I definitely did get, you know, little bits of peach or whatever squished into that ring. And I want a good, tight sound seal, so I want to be sure there's nothing on that flat glass edge. So I just wash it off like that. And then I put the, warming the lids up like this just helps soften up that rubber ring. That is what creates the seal. It's going to keep these safe for the next year or two. I will eat them before then, but they would last that long. And then again, all the ring is doing is holding that lid snugly in place until the um, the jar gets sealed in the canner. I'm going to move that syrup out of my way. Scoop that forward and turn that back on. Again, when you open anything with hot steam, open away from you so you don't give yourself a gigantic steam burn. Um, and this canner will hold seven jars. That's pretty standard. Uh, I know my parents have a couple of the real big ones that go across like a double propane burner that'll hold 15 quarts. If you've got a big family and you're gonna do a lot of canning, they're worth looking into. It's a little too big. It wouldn't even quite fit on my stove here, actually. So this works for me, even though I'm gonna do several rounds of that here. 
So, and I, the other thing to be aware of is I only want to prepare seven jars at a time. I can slice more peaches, I can even pack them in the jar, but I wouldn't want to fill the next. The rest of mine were good, but I see something I missed. There's an air bubble right there, and it's not a bad idea to do this around all your jars to let the air bubbles out. The rest seem to be pretty good. That one had one I could see. But I wouldn't want to fill my next batch of jars with my hot syrup yet and then have them sitting there cooling off on the counter while this uh, cans and waiting because I want them to be as hot as possible when they go in there. Hopefully that makes sense. So again, just like uh, canning pickles and stuff, uh, and fruit juice, anything else I've showed you, um, we're waiting for steam to come out these two holes, which means it's got to fill to the top and, and fill up the whole way down. Once the steam starts, and if you were doing a water bath canner, once you got it back to our rolling boil, that's the equivalent thing there, um, then we're going to set our timer. So we're just going to give that a few minutes, and once it's steaming, we'll start our timer. Okay, now I don't know how well the camera shows it, but I've got steam coming out both of those little holes. Um, it starts as just little puffs, and now I've got kind of a steady stream. So I am going to set my timer here for nine minutes. Um, if you want to look up what the FDA recommends as being utterly completely safe on times for different uh, fruits and veggies and different elevations and stuff, please feel free to do that. I highly encourage it. I find most of them overkill and leave you with very mushy fruit. Um, so I'm just showing you what I do. But again, look up that stuff, make your own decisions. I'm just showing you what I do. I have been canning stuff for many, many years, probably started when I was like five years old or six maybe, helping with that, and I'm still alive in my 30s, so this is just my experience. If you wanted to do that for some longer amount of time, you would do everything else exactly as I'm showing you, and just let this canner run longer. Okay, I've been getting obviously my next canner load ready while this one finished. I'm going to turn that off. As always, with anything with hot steam, open it away from yourself and a little bit slowly. It's not a bad idea. There we go. And then if you're going to pick up hot jars, you're going to need a handy thingy like this. Um, I guess you can do it otherwise, but it's, uh, it's a lot handier with a handy thingy like this. Uh, you can find one of these in my list of kitchen items I use regularly, along with almost anything else you might wonder about in, in the kitchen here. Uh, the vast majority of things I've got linked uh, on uh, Amazon under amazon.com slash shop if you want to look up things. I'm setting these off here. I think I've talked about this before. You don't want to put scalding hot jars, which these are right now, onto a cold surface where you will most likely shatter them. My countertops are fairly good already being wooden that does not get cold like uh, stainless steel or granite or other things like that. Uh, but even so, I like putting a cloth down just so there's no uh, rapid uh, temperature change there. And these are going to sit right here. I can hear, hear the and see the liquid still bubbling in them. Um, for about 24 hours before I move them. In just a minute here I should see hear those lids start snapping and uh, they will be sealed and good to store for a year. Now I'm going to get going here on the rest of this because I probably have something like 30 quarts to do and that's my first seven done. I got seven more ready to go in. By the time they're done I'll have seven more and so on so I'll just be doing this for a little bit. And then I know people are going to ask where do you put all this? You live in a tiny house. I have a pretty big pantry in here. This goes back a pretty long way. That's uh, pretty deep and I've got very solid shelves in there and I can put a lot of canned goods in there. And then behind you in that loft uh, above the couch I also store things, especially at this time of year when I have the most stuff to store all at once. So hopefully that's interesting. If you've ever wondered about canning things, this is peaches. A lot of things work in very similar ways, especially a lot of other fruits you could do in a similar way and so on. You can can nectarines or something like that or um, apricots and plums exactly like this. And I'll try to continue doing more canning videos as I do more things. Probably tomatoes is going to be the next one. So if you've got any questions or something I didn't cover, please ask down below. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.
Hi folks, Ariel over here. Thanks for spending some of your valuable time watching these videos. Hopefully you found something beautiful, educational, interesting, peaceful, relaxing, or useful while you are here. If so, find more videos here, subscribe so you don't miss any updates, and if you like what you found here, feel free to like and share away so that others can benefit as well. You all have a wonderful day.